Merrick Ishtar is arguably one of the greatest villains in Yu-Gi-Oh history. He had the looks, the menace, and the skills all down to a T. And while I do very much like Merrick as a character, he also happens to be one of the luckiest people in Yu-Gi-Oh. Now that might sound weird as he's the guy whose family was sentenced to protect an ancient tomb for all eternity, his dark side ended up killing his father, and in the manga he had to get carvings on his back as a child. And while each of these things is horrific by themselves, that's not the kind of luck I was talking about. No, the luck I'm talking about is how on Sogan's Green Earth did Merrick not get disqualified during Battle City? And yes, I know Kaibo probably wasn't disqualifying anyone who might have had even a 1% chance of having Raw, but still, no matter how you look at it, Merrick should have been booted from the tournament at least a dozen different times, and lucky me, I just happened to write all of them down. So before I send this over to Kaiba Corp's HR department, let me list for you every reason Merrick shouldn't have even been allowed to step within 100 meters of the tournament. And if you want Merrick to stay 100 meters away from you, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. So since we're going through Merrick's laundry list of cheating, there's probably no better place to start than at the beginning. So starting at number one, Merrick was never even supposed to be a part of Battle City in the first place. That's right, in case you forgot, Merrick and the rest of the rare hunters hacked into Battle City's computer system and entered themselves into the tournament illegally. And can I just say how much this doesn't make sense? Like, you're telling me, this ragtag group of thieves and Magic the Gathering haters were able to bypass the security defenses of a multi-billion dollar company with no one noticing. At least it made sense when Siegfried did it because he also owns a tech company. Meanwhile, Merrick seems like he doesn't even know what a computer is. Regardless, now that Merrick is actually in Battle City, surely it'll take a while before he cheats again, right? Oh yeah, he's playing with stolen cards. And not just any cards, the most powerful cards in the game, and they were stolen from the creator of the game itself. And just in case stealing valuable cards wasn't enough, offense number three is Merrick overseeing a group that printed counterfeit cards. The most egregious examples being Exodia and the Winged Dragon of Raw. And it's not like this was a victimless offense either. Both Joey and Odeon got struck by lightning after Raw saw the bootleg merch. And what's wild about all of this is that we're already three reasons in, and Merrick is still not even in Battle City yet. This nicely brings us to number four. He was already eliminated from the tournament. Specifically, he was eliminated after his duel with Atem, where he took control of strings and lost to one of the biggest brain, but still illegal, plays in the franchise. But since that wasn't his physical body, he just acted like nothing happened. Which, I mean, I guess is fine as long as he doesn't do it again. Are you kidding me? Yeah, so as it turns out, Merrick is a really big fan of Double or Nothing. Granted, this time he didn't technically lose as Joey broke free and forced the match into a draw, but just the sheer fact that he almost made Yugi lose by threatening to kill his best friend seems like a bootable offense. And while we're on that note, how about just blatantly attempting to kill other competitors? He tries murdering Joey, Yugi, Kaiba, Mai, Odeon, you get the picture. And right before we get to the blimp, we have our number 7 offense conspiring with another competitor. Yeah, in case you don't remember, Merrick and Bakura decided to make a deal where if Bakura defeated Yugi and took Slifer from him, Merrick would give Bakura his rod. Add the rare hunters to the equation and Merrick essentially put a giant target on Yugi's back, which should probably be against tournament rules. Now we're finally on the blimp, and this next offense is similar to number 5, but there are still a couple differences. And it comes in the duel between Yugi and Bakura, where Merrick has Odeon pretend to release the real Bakura from Yami Bakura, forcing a to choose between possibly killing Bakura and losing the duel. Obviously this plan doesn't work out in the end, but this should still mean something. I mean it was right in front of Kaiba the guy in charge of this whole freak show, and he still did nothing. And that's not even mentioning number 9, how Merrick lied on record about who he was while letting everyone think that Odeon was the real Merrick. Now, I've never been to an official Yu-Gi-Oh tournament before, but I am damn certain you have to at least be honest about your name. Now, for this last couple, I'm gonna go a bit out of order, but trust me, I have some choice words for the last offense. But coming up at number 10, we have Merrick's obsession with torture coming into play, even though this alone should make sure that Merrick never does. I mean, come on, man. Yu-Gi-Oh players already have to suffer when our opponent negates every Everything we have and spends what feels like 84 years setting up their board. Don't we deserve a break that doesn't cause us more pain? Well apparently not as Merrick takes multiple opportunities to torture his opponents both mentally and physically, with obviously the most notable example being that time he dueled Joey and caused every 10 year old Yu-Gi-Oh fan to cry into their cereal. For the second last offense we have one that's a little weird to count as a punishable offense but I'm just gonna include it anyway and it's taking the spot of another duelist. Which duelist did he replace you ask? Well that's what makes this complicated. It's himself. Yeah, this is something I completely forgot until I researched it. Yami Merrick isn't some ancient spirit like Atem or Bakura are. 
He's just an amalgamation of all of Merrick's pent-up negative emotions that was brought to life by the Millennium Rod. Which means that Merrick technically got replaced by himself. Whether this means Merrick got replaced or just needs therapy, I'm just gonna leave that to you. And finally, in my opinion, the move that should have gotten Merrick kicked out and banned from all tournaments until the heat death of the universe... Bringing a card that no one could read. In what is by far the most egregious example of cheating in all of Yu-Gi-Oh, this man was about to lose to Mai until he brought out this sh out of nowhere to stop her from winning. What tournament would allow this? Does this mean that my totally real friend from Japan is gonna always beat me because he's bilingual and I'm not? So he could just make up abilities for all his cards and I couldn't do anything about it because of my medical condition, Lazianus? If so, I am greatly disgusted by Kaiba Corp's unwillingness to do anything about the blatant cheating on display here. It is without question one of the most disappointing things in Duel Monsters that you've let this stand, and I hope this letter helps you to change your behaviors in the future. Since Sincerely signed, Saiyan's Logic, and every Duel Monsters fan in existence. Three weeks later.